I've recently upgraded from a triangular mesh to an hexagonal mesh. The new mesh is way more visually appealing. Hexagons look more even than triangles, make less jagged edges, and has better adjacency. Overall, this is a great improvement. In this video, I'm going to briefly go over the steps needed to generate such a mesh on a sphere. Before I start, I can also say that I've made a little program for visualizing hexagonal spheres of varying resolutions. It's currently available on my itch.io page. Now, let's have a look at how to generate hexagonal meshes on spheres. We start with a simple convex icosahedron. The icosahedron has 12 vertices and 20 faces. It's more commonly known as the shape of a 20-sided dice. Theoretically, other convex polyhedra, like the tetrahedron or cube, would work, but they would create more artifacts, so we stick to the icosahedron. This icosahedron makes up a triangular mesh that tessellates the sphere. Creating a hexagonal mesh from this requires two steps. The first is to increase the resolution of the triangular mesh. The second is to perform a Voronoi tessellation. To increase the resolution of the triangular grid, we iteratively subdivide each triangle. Imagine we have this triangle. It's represented by three vertices and one face. We now create a new vertex on each edge. The previous face will be removed and replaced by four new faces. The resulting mesh will have four times as many triangles as the previous one. We can repeat this process iteratively until we achieve a mesh with sufficient resolution. The more subdivisions, the more smooth the sphere will look. The amount of subdivisions necessary would depend on the application. Now that we have a triangular mesh of sufficient resolution, we can begin with step 2, performing the Voronoi tessellation. We first take a look at our triangular grid. Each vertex in this mesh will become the center of a polygon in our new mesh. We mark these as red dots. In order to distinguish one polygon from another, we need to define a border between them. We do this by creating new vertices in the center of each triangle. The border vertices are marked as blue dots. We now connect the adjacent blue dots to form the border. We can now clearly see how the final hexagons will look. If we hide the triangular mesh and create new triangles within the hexagons, it looks like this. A hexagonal mesh is nothing more than a triangular mesh in disguise. These new triangles are for example needed if we want to create 3D graphics for the mesh. If we clear away the triangles and helping dots, we can see the hexagons even more clearly. Comparing to the triangular mesh we started with, the resulting hexagons has less jagged edges and in general just look way better. We can now generate hexagonal spheres of varying resolutions. The spheres has an appealing appearance for all resolution levels. One thing to note is that this mesh does not only contain hexagons. These meshes will always have 12 pentagons as well, no matter their resolution level. This is an artifact from the icosahedron that we started with. You can choose other convex polyhedra, but that would give even worse artifacts. Depending on your application, this might or might not be important. The visual impact of the pentagons are greatly reduced as the resolution increases. So, that is one way of generating hexagonal meshes of spheres. I've not gone through any implementation or code, but I believe the concept and the general steps are the most important. Hopefully, this information has been helpful to some of you. If you'd like to see more of this kind of content, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.